economics, uh, we're talking about economics and the managerial decision making. And uh, in the next uh, less than 15 minutes, I will finish this chapter, so please pay attention. Uh, this chapter talks about economics and managerial decision making and review of economic terms and concepts. So this is more of an introduction. Uh, in this chapter, we will define managerial economics, discuss the relationship between micro and other related fields of study, such as finance, marketing, and statistics. That's why you, know, you need to have uh, some previous statistics background. Uh, cite and compare important types of decisions that managers must make concerning allocation of companies' scarce resources. Do you guys remember scarce resources? It's a very important topic, right? You always have very limited uh, time. You want to do a lot of things. You have limited money. You want to do a lot of money. So the question in economics, how can we best use these resources to get the maximum happiness or uh, satisfaction? We will compare the three basic economic questions from the standpoint of both a country and a company. So here, we're talking about economics. What is economics? It is the study of behavior of human beings in producing, distributing, and consuming material goods and services in a world of scarce resources. Remember, there's a lot of things that you want to do, and almost your wants are unlimited. But you always have this limited resources that prevent you. The limited resources here uh, will make you not able. So here is your wants, and then here is your resources. And uh, your resources are always less than your wants, and therefore comes the whole study of economics. Uh, how humans, they produce and how they actually consume. And distribution comes in, uh, in the middle. Uh, we'll compare this to management. You guys remember in your management class, you talked about management as the science of organizing and allocating the firm's scarce resources. So in management, you start to look into how you organize and you, how you allocate in order your uh, scarce resources. But in uh, economics, you start to look at the behavior of humans. You see? All right. Uh, next, we've got this managerial economics, which is this course. Talks about the use of economic analysis to make business decisions involving the best use of allocation uh, of an, an organization's scarce resources. So for you as a business, how can you make sure that you are going to be able to use your resources for the best uh, cause and spend for these resources? Now, if you look at the relationship to other business disciplines, where is managerial economics to other fields of study? Now, managerial economics compared with finance, uh, in finance you talked about capital budgeting, right? Which is how you manage your resources, your own and how much money you're actually using. Uh, you guys remember break-even analysis? Yes. That's a basic economic uh, decision, right? Uh, when am I going to be able to cover my costs? And uh, opportunity cost. Do you guys remember opportunity cost? Yes. How much, you, what you need to give up sacrifice. in order to sacrifice in order to get something else. Uh, so if you have one hour of time, you can come study, right? And you will, go, get, you will earn some value, which is the education. In that same hour, you can go and work and get maybe $100 in that one hour. So you take a class, there's an opportunity cost, which is this much money you will give up. That's your opportunity cost. And if you remember in finance, opportunity cost, we start to talk about the cost of capital. And then we tell you if you have $100, you can invest it and get at the end of the year $20 profit. Or you can put it in the bank and at the end of the year you will get $20 profit. So maybe the opportunity cost in this business, it's zero. Uh, you don't want to invest in a uh, you know $100 that give you 20 and you work hard while you can take 100, put it in the bank, and get the 20 without having to do anything. So that's a finance topic that is originally from a, uh, related to the managerial economics. And next, we've got this economic value added. And what did we say economic value added? Is how much are you able to generate profits more than all of the other opportunities? We talked about if you have five managers, every one of them can make 10% profit and the fifth one was able to give you 15%. 
then this last one give you an economic value profit of 5% more than what everyone else in the market can do. Uh, here we're talking about marketing. In marketing, you studied so the idea of demand and the price elasticity. These are important decisions for marketing. People come originally from a managerial economics. Idea of managerial accounting in your managerial accounting class probably talked about relevant costs. The cost that is very important in order to produce compared with irrelevant cost that is money you spend but it has not and has nothing to do with the direct product so if you're going to do cost accounting for this particular product you include the irrelevant or you don't include the irrelevant that's an important topic that comes in managerial economics break-even analysis we talked about it incremental cost analysis do you guys remember incremental cost analysis in your accounting which is, you know, incremental, like each one addition and how much it will cost. In, in economics, we're very focused on to the idea of marginal cost and marginal benefits. Do you guys remember marginal cost and marginal benefits? You know, the, the, how much it will cost you to produce one more. If I have a business and I sell, uh, you know, 100 pizzas, how much it will cost me the pizza number 101? How much will it cost me? You know, probably it will not cost me like the first pizza. If I only do one pizza, it will cost me everything. It will cost me the salary of the labor. But the number 101, maybe you just need to spend just, you know, whatever variable cost, or maybe uh, maybe it's going to be, and depending on where you are in the production cycle, maybe that 101 is very expensive. Because 101, it means you need to rent another uh, place or maybe you want to buy another cooker, or maybe you need to hire a new employee. So we we're talking about this idea of marginal cost. Where, and then opportunity cost, we talked about it. <clears throat> in your strategy, the types of competition. Remember, if I am in an oligopoly, and I have uh, you know only few uh, players in the market, I need to have a strategy. Do I have to talk to them? What happens if I cheat? Remember game theory rules. I need to consider. You know, if I start to beat them on this, uh, you know, product line, maybe they will beat me on another product line. If we make an agreement, remember the cartel, the OPEC countries, they agree on how much they produce in oil. So, you know, a political uh, problem, political strategy can make this work and it can make it fail. Uh, structure, conduct, performance analysis. How is your performance going uh, given if you are a monopoly? How can you improve uh, your uh, monopoly uh, value? How can you gain more if you're the only player? Uh, remember the idea of, you know, some companies, they make a strategy. I want to come up with a new product that is very unique, so all the people love it, and I go and I register it, and I get a patent. Remember Apple when they have a patent over their iPhone, one button? And then if someone tried to follow my idea, I go to the court and I tell them, hey, look, uh, this was my idea, and you cannot use it. And then how much Samsung had to pay Apple for their $9 billion. Uh, and then next, we're talking about the idea of management science, linear programming, regression analysis, and forecasting. These are topics in managerial economics. In this class, we will do forecasting, and we will look at a good example for regression analysis, just to make sure you guys understand it, which is this uh, management science or statistics. Okay. Uh, next, we are, have here some questions. Managers must answer. If you're a manager, I have a question for you. What are the economic conditions in our particular market? So in your business, okay, uh, what is your market structure? Are you monopoly, oligopoly? Are you monopolistic competition? Are you oligopoly? How much is your supply and demand? Do you have big demand? Is your demand stable? Is your demand elastic? If you increase your prices, will customers run away? If you increase your prices, uh, will people stay, uh, come back to you? Will they move to a substitute? Uh, will other businesses be affected? What technologies are there? Is there a new technology that may change the entire business? Uh, these are questions that you need to ask uh, that is managerial uh, economics in uh, nature. Should our firm be in this business? Okay, if so, at what price? Uh, in your business, do you set up your own price? Do you follow the market prices? Uh, can you control prices? What factors may reduce your price? 
uh, is it highly possible that your price will increase or decrease your output level how much do you produce do I produce one unit, 10 units, 100 units, 1,000, 1 million? Do I need to buy a lot of equipment to buy this, to produce this? Can the firm achieve a sustainable competitive advantage? Remember the idea of competitive advantage. What do you have that is giving you this value? And the question, how can you make sure it's sustainable? So you will want to continue. Do you guys remember those people who sell potatoes or tomatoes? Uh, do they have a competitive advantage? Their product is available. It is, you know, offered at a reasonable price uh, in the correct market. You know, if you have tomatoes and you're not in that big market for vegetables, maybe you're not, you know, sustainable or you don't have that competitive advantage. Uh, and then what are the additional economic conditions in our particular markets? So if you are in the business of tomatoes, are there government regulations? If you are in the telecommunication, what are the government regulations? If you are in the oil business, what are the government or, uh, regulations? Do they affect your business? Of course. By the way, some of the new regulations here in Yemen, listen to this. Yesterday, they announced, Ministry of Higher Education. If you want to register for a master's degree in the country of Yemen, you are not allowed to register between now and the next fall. So starting from tomorrow, there will be no more admission to anyone want to take an MBA in this program. That's per the government regulations. They decided to stop education for higher education for a short period of time until they make sure that everyone is following the new rules and regulations for higher education. This okay? Fine. This is true. International, international uh, dimension. What is going on in the international arena? You see? Uh, in the international arena, are we, uh, you know, what is going on? Is the prices internationally going down? You guys know oil prices are international prices, right? And then not only international prices, it also goes with the international supply and demand substitutes for power in general. So if there is a new type of renewable energy, it may affect oil business. Do you see? Uh, the idea of future conditions. What do we expect in the future? You guys know that every one home out of every four new homes in the U.S. are 100% dependent on renewable energy. So renewable energy, you know, non-fossil, non solar, wind, pot. You see, out of every four new homes are 100% dependent on renewable energy. So, so the idea of fossil uh, uh, energy is becoming more of a decrease, uh, you know, demand. The idea of macroeconomic factors uh, is the GDP, the per capita, what is happening in the fiscal policy. Uh, government, uh, Central Bank of Yemen decided to withhold cash, to spend cash, increase interest rates, drop interest rates. Do they affect your business? Absolutely, because that's going to affect the currency, how much you have to pay in local currency and in international currency. And uh, next, we've got this question, which is, uh, what are our strategies to maintain competitive advantage? Are we a cost leader? Uh, can we maintain our cost? Can we continue our differentiation? You guys remember differentiation, how different you are than your competitors. Uh, are we in a niche? Do you guys know what's a niche? Are we focused on a small market segment? For example, we only focus on people who love ketchup. Then I'm working in a niche if I sell tomato that wise. And then outsourcing, are we on an alliance? Are there any merger? These are also other issues that can you know, uh, make my uh, uh, business uh, strategically maintain its competitive advantage. And then international perspective. What's happening in the international arena affecting your business? What kind of risks are involved? Changes in demand and supply. Okay, what will happen if you run out of your supply? What happens if you no longer have, uh, what is it, diesel? Uh, you run out of diesel, does your business stop? Do you keep an inventory? Technological changes, is there a new technology changing your business? Changes in the interest, inflation rates, exchange rate, ex uh, change uh, for companies engage in international trade. You know, if you're, uh, you know, if you're, product or service dependent on international supplier, how is exchange rate affecting, and a political risk. Is political risk a big concern or a small concern? Big, big concern. You guys have seen it. 
uh, especially with any foreign operations. Now, the economy of a business refers to the key factors that will affect a firm's ability to earn acceptable rate of return on the owner's investment. And then here, the economy, can you generate a return? The idea of, you know, I spend $100, I put this much effort, what do I get in return? Uh, we're talking, this is the economics of uh, business. And is this return, is it acceptable? Is it worthwhile? Is it better than the next alternative? Uh, and the most important of these factors, competition, technology, and customers. Are you guys okay with these? Do I agree? Makes sense? Uh, microeconomics is the study of individual consumer and producer in a specific market. So here, when we talk micro, we're talking about a specific market. We're talking about the tomato business. We're talking about the oil business. We're talking about uh, the clothes business. So we're talking about a very specific area, specific type of customer and sell supplier, supply and demand, uh, pricing of outputs, production process, uh, cost structure, and distribution of income. Do you guys know what's the idea of distribution of income? How can you redistribute your income? Okay. Macroeconomics is the study of the aggregate economy. Uh, macroeconomics, on the opposite, talks about the GDP. Do you know what's the GDP? Yes. That's how much total national output. The idea of unemployment, the idea of inflation, uh, physical monetary policies, trade finance. Okay. Uh, I think we're running out of time. Uh, idea of scarcity. You guys know what's scarcity? Good. Opportunity cost? Good. Uh, do you guys know factors of production? Great. Uh, these are the main questions. What, how, and for whom? Okay. That's the last question on the problems today. This is what we produce, how we produce it, and for whom we produce it. And then we've got those three processes. Market is when supply and demand by the market. Command, that's when the government controls. Tradition, that's when uh, our local tradition dictates. For example, Yemeni yeah, people in Eid, they buy Zabib loads. So how does the economy of Zabib loads come from? Traditional process. And uh, that's the end of this chapter. Okay? Oh.